Let's look for Paul. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if he's here. There he is. Oh my God. I wish there was a way to have Paul and Clark on the show at the same time. Um, hey. Hey. I know you. Gosh. There we go. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Nice to see you. And you've got. Good to see you. Been a while. You've got AirPods. Uh, I didn't. I was. I, did. thinking, I was kicking myself. Double. I was like, oh, I should have told Paul to wear AirPods. But you're smart enough to know that that would help this process. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing uh, recording um, for for the audio show that you're going to do some stuff on. And uh, yes. So I learned about. Can you tell us anything? Ab- can you tell us anything about your audio book audio show? At all or not? Is it is it sure. under wraps yet? No, yeah. there's nothing under wraps, and there's no way to to ruin this. <laughs> 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 it is about being in a moment, any given moment. There's no like greater mystery there. It's a captain of a spaceship, uh, and people around him. Uh, the captain has no interest in space travel. It's just this very anti sci fi kind of sci fi where they they do a lot of hanging out in space. Um, and, uh, he has just this incredible apathy and, um, just trying to kill time. I've always, <laughs> I've always, <laughs> I've always thought that this captains of spaceships care so much and they're willing to risk their lives <laughs> every week. And I don't know anyone like that. So right. I just wanted to, to put a kind of a, but we don't know anyone like in the military. No, I don't really know. I mean, I know a few people that have been in the military, but I imagine if you meet an admiral Mm -hmm. on a battle cruiser in the Baltic, he's going to be like, I really care about this cruiser. Let's make sure these decks are swabbed and are the guns pointed in the right direction. And yes, but every admiral, every admiral in the history of admirals, I don't know. No, got to be one out there. It's just like, Let's not go near that battle. Paul, what are you Let's grateful the other for? Way. What are you grateful for? Um, a lot, you know. Uh, life's pretty good right now, and, and I'm grateful for pretty good. You know, that's, I feel like that's, uh, that's the bar, and we've been below it and above it, and we're above it, so. You're above pretty good. That's, we're that's above terrific. pretty good, and I like it. The family's all good. Good. School's going well. Kids seem happy. Are kids all, doing all the, the Zoom? Are they Zoom schooling? They're Zoom schooling. Yeah. Zoom and schooling. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's going all right. I mean, my my old daughter really seems to thrive in it. Actually. Okay. Good. And uh, that's great. Yeah. So. Good. Do you have <laughs> one of the things we talk about on the show? We don't we don't do it every week, but one of the, one of the themes of the show, Hey There Human, when we started doing it was to just kind of like connect people and people are calling in from all over the world. You can see in the comments, they're from all over the world. Let us know where you're from folks. Um, And how are we thriving and how are we hurting and how are we connecting? So uh, do you have any like, uh, I, I mean, you're the last person on the earth I would ever think to like go to for mental health <laughs> <laughs> tips. <laughs> but <laughs> since you're here, <laughs> surprise us. What do you think? What do you think? Um, I, I think that uh, I try to live in the big picture as much as possible right now. Okay, Just... how do you do that? So what does that mean? Just like, this doesn't last forever. This isn't mm-hmm. going to be here forever. We're in a mm-hmm. very strange time. Mm. And to think about like, God, I haven't seen, I, I, I don't see people, ah, but I will see people again. I have seen them before. I will see them again. I do have mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. I just don't talk to them much these days, but it's these days only. You know, there's just, it, there's a rough time. Right, right. And then politi- gonna... politically, too, it's like, right. it's, it looks pretty grim right now, but it's looked grim before and it gets better and we, we, we ebb and flow and 
Um, yeah, and it's going to get better again. Yeah, a friend of mine was reminding me that there have been some very, very dark times in the past politically, too, where, I mean, don't, let's not forget we had a civil war so that, <laughs> you know. Yeah, much it, darker than this, yeah. It got so bad yeah. that there were millions of people dead and dying on battlefields because of the d intense divisions in the United States. But even other times, presidential assassinations and, and mourning and difficulty and, uh, you know, great depressions and, yeah. and, and World wars. Of, yeah, yeah, world wars, incredibly bad times. So it, it does, it's been as uh, difficult as these decades have been since like the Vietnam War. There's been a lot of ups yeah. and downs, kind of like this, but it's been generally fairly peaceful you could say i mean obviously you're right We've racial had... racial injustice environmental injustice yeah. economic injustice a lot of that of course but stability in an american kind of way and now it's kind of just getting weird more weirdly fractured yeah yeah, yeah. and we had such you know such racial advancements with obama that it feels just, it feels like a real blow. Like mm. it's extra hard, you know, like mm. we were winning the, winning the fight and then it just came mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what else do you want to talk about, Paul? Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, I too saw your house, congrats, that's really cool. You have a pretty awesome house. I don't Thank think you. anyone cares about you enough to do like a tour, <laughs> an architectural tour of your house. It's not true. It's not true. It was in the LA Times. Uh, they had a big spread on the house. Oh, the LA Times. Yeah. Well, okay. Nine people get Architectural Digest, so. It's the number one. <laughs> um, but you have a beautiful mid-century house that you helped design yourself. This this I just bought. These other people made it, and it was exquisite. So, um, do you know anything about the people before you? I mean, that panic room is is insane. Yeah, it was nuts. Uh, I know uh, that they were a family called the Duntleys, and they lived in Central California. And they did um, they had um, railroads, and they were actually mule teams. They were involved in like the old, old California, like uh, early 1800s gold uh, bor borax, you know, uh, when they would do the mining in like Death Valley for real. And that's huh. how they made their money. And they, they bought this whole area where I'm in, they bought the whole area. And then this was their house they built in the 70s. They worked with a top architect named Hap Gilman um, in, the, in its creation. And... Um, uh, and it's one of the amazing things about this place is that the, the loving care they put on all the details, like every beam and door and frame and how the stone is laid out and where the windows are and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's, a, it's really, it's really cool. So we, we just got to profit at someone else's hard work, but you actually built your house. How long did it take you to build your house? That was a couple of years, but then there, before that, it was years. It was years yeah. in the prep. It was the insane. planning and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With two different yeah. architects and yeah. Cool. Uh, Are you writing on any <laughs> TV shows? Um, developing one. Uh, sold a show to to CBS All Access that I'm writing, and right. uh, I mean, it came in a little late. Yeah, congratulations yeah. on that. It was fun. Fun to work with Steve again. Yeah. And yeah. uh, Greg is now going to do another season of Upload up in Vancouver for a long time. Yeah, spell. he's going to leave soon to, to go there. Yeah, yeah. Leave for like nine months. So now's our chance to say you and I were the forces behind that great Dwight spinoff show, The Farm. I, think are, I was thinking about that yesterday. Reunited again, had NBC greenlit The Farm back in the day and made it's eight so episodes crazy. of The Farm. They would be sitting on a huge franchise. Would it have been as big as The Office? No, of course not. Well, you know, we don't know yet. And we had Middle Ditch, we had you, we, it was, sure. uh, um, we, we put together a really fun cast. And I don't know, we, we also had a core, we, we, it was really gonna be about something that we didn't, that we never had a chance to 
get to. Yeah. But the struggling American farmer, you know, we the the family farm. I mean, I think we would have really tapped into something. And yeah. uh, I don't know. The, the show could have been really great. And I think <clears throat> I think about it all the time because we started it in the middle of the last year of the show. Right. But had we waited a year and people started mm. to realize what The Office was, what it meant, what it meant without it. And yeah. also we wouldn't be kind of competing with it with a love show we would be right. in addition to you know Frazier and I remember it. that I just remember that regime came into NBC and boy they just they just were so tired of the office they didn't want they were anything. the worst I mean it's like new executives come in all the time to a show and they or to a to a place and they just don't want anything to do with what's there they want to put their own stamp on everything yeah. and they didn't really know the office I mean, it became really clear that they weren't watching. They didn't know everybody's name. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a big bungle because we wanted to do, and, and just for people watching that didn't know this, like we wanted to do something really cool about like the American family farm and uh, the plight of the farmer and what it's like to run a farm and and food and farm to table and trying to make a farm economically survivable by making it a bread and breakfast and a bed and breakfast and having tours and um you know uh and this sounds like a boring documentary but we really <laughs> wanted to do it <laughs> with but real, we would uh, with a, <coughs> we would have came in from comedy. the comedy yeah i mean yeah. our first episode didn't have any of that it was just going to be yeah. all comedy it was very hard doing a a uh, one of those what they call a backdoor episode where you know, it's it's an episode yeah. of an existing show that introduces like four or five new characters in in a 21 minute and 30 second window. I mean, we had to tell our pilot and then we had to have some B and C stories with Jim and Pam and other characters. So we, we really had, had like 15 or 16 minutes to tell our story. Yeah, it was not. Right. And, you know, when I when we first tested it, you know, without those other stories in. Mm -hmm. like, like uh most of the comments were were about like this is disappointing where's everybody else where's mm -hmm. where's jim and pam and michael you know mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we thought we were watching the office sorry mm -hmm. you know <laughs> had you known the office was off the air and just saw this for what right. it was it might have been something else, you know right right and it, we could have even done like a year later or two years later just done like a a special like a one hour special or a two hour special of like the crew visits Dwight and what's going on with Dwight. Yeah. You know, just as a standalone kind of thing. And that could have been the the foundation to start a show or something like that. So there's yeah. a lot of, uh, that's, yeah, that's too picked, bad. Yeah. People now and then would have come in, you know, I always loved on, on Frasier whenever someone from Cheers, whenever they brought right. someone from Cheers. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Creed could have been living like a homeless man in the <laughs> barn, you know, Kevin would have been the Shrewd Farms accountant, you know. Yes, it's coming to clean up the books. Yeah. In the in the shed. <laughs> uh, exactly. We could have uh, had a lot of yeah. great crossovers. So, well, listen, Paul, you're a beautiful, hey. wonderful ginger human being. And it's really um, good to see you again. It's good to see you. I'm going to miss and the I show. I think you should do this. I think you should keep it going. Why, where are you going? Why are you stopping? All right. You're just... It's time to move on, man. It's time to move on. I gotta be free. I gotta be me. It's time That's to let it reason. go. That's I've done a lot reason. of episodes, 76 episodes. Yeah. And um, it's been really fun, but, uh, and I think the Soul Pancake team is ready to move on to some other stuff and stop helping me produce this thing. So, um, and I don't, I don't really wanna be a talk show host. This is just a fun little <laughs> thing on the side with 324 people watching. So, um, uh, <laughs> so it but, well, it'll be many more at the end of the day, uh -huh. but you're, uh, you're a beautiful human being so, and a great seeing you. I look forward to voicing these characters on your new show called Captain. Captain. I changed the title. It was Captain, Captain I Have Cancer. It was Captain I Have Cancer. And then Audible was like, we're, we kind of are a little worried about putting Captain I Have Cancer on a billboard or side of a bus. I have a couple friends with cancer right now. And it's like, I get for it. real? I, 
I get it. And it's yeah. like, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm ready to laugh at anything, and it's, it's a little, it's a little hard. So it's called yeah. Captain. It is going to yeah. be on Audible. I'm voicing. Yeah. There's a lot of great uh, voice talent on this uh, sci-fi yeah. epic yeah. comedy adventure. So people can look for that. All right. Okay, dude. Goodbye. Bye. Say, give my love to your do family. I... Will do. And I'm going to kick you off. Okay. Okay. Shut up. Go away. Horrible, horrible human being.